Hello everyone and welcome back to the university. Today we have another small claims case before Judge Middleton. This is James R. Smith Jr. versus Don Dean. Now Mr. Dean doesn't appear for this hearing. No real reason as to why, just didn't respond, didn't show up. And the final decision was kind of surprising to me given all the facts of the case. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hope you enjoy. All right, this is file number 231323SC. Are you James R. Smith, Jr.? Yes. Uh, Mr. Don Dean is the defendant. He was personally served by Sergeant Bruce Morse on October 5th. They served everything on him. He is not here. He did call or some caretaker called on his behalf. And uh, we'll talk about that here in a minute. You're suing for the statutory maximum, $6,500. Some of the things you're suing for can't be recovered in small claims court, like lost wages. Uh, there's some other issues here, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Would you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. I swear, yes. All right, tell me how you came up with a figure of $6,500. Well, I've got a dog that's permanently injured. Um, All right, well, so how much is that? Do you have vet bills, that sort of thing? Yeah. All right, those are the kind of things that are recoverable, All right. not pain and suffering or that sort of thing. Um, so <clears throat> when going through the file, <clears throat> I've got uh, Lane Veterinary Services, $117. <clears throat> Is that correct? Oh, uh, there's been more than that. All right, well, I'm doing one at a time. Oh, okay. That was uh, dated July 14th. Yes, sir. And then there's another one of $47. Is that of September 8th? No, that's 8-18. Okay. No, wait a minute. That's July 19th. Okay. Yes. Then uh, July 21. We have $209. Yes. Uh, August 4th, we have $75. Yes. 821, we have $47. Yes. And I guess that's it. I also have one for 9, 8 of $47. And then I also have one for the uh, ER of Kalamazoo for $257.15. Were those served on him? Well, these were after. Uh, yeah, I can only default him on stuff that he knows about. If he was here, we could argue about it. Okay. Um, but he's he's not here. So he might say, okay, I accept some of this. Um, there's some other fundamental problems, but let's add this up. 117 plus 47 plus 209 plus 75 plus 47. So those are all the ones that he has notice of. That adds up to $495. Then what do you have since then? I have the original one when I took him to the emergency room. All right. How much is that? $257.15. Why didn't you include that one? I thought I did. Well, maybe you did, and I'm not catching it.
And these are all at Lane Veterinary Service? Yes, Your Honor. I have 117, 47, 209. I didn't do that. Yeah, there's 209. 75 and 47. Those are all the only ones that were filed. No the only ones that he would have been served with. All right. How do you know that Don Dean shot your dog? Uh, the neighbors uh, heard the gunshots come from his yard and my dog crying. And then I found my dog in his yard the next day after he shot him. How do you know he shot him? Because he's the only person that lives over there. The neighbors called and he never responded to them asking him if he shot a dog. I was at work when it happened. Well, there's two. One thing is knowing something and another is proving it. Mm -hmm. Certainly, if he was charged with shooting your dog in a criminal case, you don't have proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure you've got proof for the standard for civil court, which is a preponderance, just more than the other. But so you're saying it came, the shots came from his yard. He's the only one that lives there, and the dog was found in his yard. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, but he never admitted that he shot it. Did you ever try to talk to him about it? I went there the day after I found my dog and asked, asked him about it. He said he had no idea where he was when it happened and he never heard any gunshots. So he denied it? Yes. All right, so I found from what you filed $495. How do we get the other $6,005 that you have claimed? I mean, you have $6,500. How do I break that down? Well, I can't claim for lost wages. and. Well, I don't even know the amount for lost wages. But if this was a general civil case, you could sue for that sort of stuff if you put it in the complaint. But there's nothing in here that supports $6,500 well, other than that's a statutory maximum. My vet says that my dog needs to have a surgery and go to a specialist and have a grafting and bone grafting. And that's and the problem with that is you haven't incurred the expense yet. And so you can't sue in small claims court for future expenses. Right. You could sue in general civil court for up to $25,000. But you can't sue for missing work. You can't sue for the pain and suffering of your dog. Um, he isn't here to argue about it. So I guess I'll give you the presumption with a default that he, uh, there's a preponderance that he shot it because he isn't here otherwise. Have you got any other compensable expenses that happened well, again, the problem is you didn't file them. Um, so let's say in the last case, she says, I lent him $1,000 and he didn't pay it back. And he gets served with that lawsuit. And he says, yeah, I owe $1,000. I'm not going to court. In a civil case, if you don't go, you automatically lose. In a criminal case, if you don't go, you're in contempt of court and you can be incarcerated. But in a civil case, if you don't show up, the punishment is you automatically lose. So she sued him for $1,000. She said, yeah, I guess I owe that. He didn't come. She can't then come to court and say, oh, by the way, he owes me another $2,500 and he was not on notice of it. Now, if he was here, and if Mr. Dean was here, we could take up these other expenses that you've got from the vet, but he isn't here. 
So I can only default him on what he has notice of. If he was here, we could talk about it. Um, but you don't have ballpark. How much do you have in missing and lost wages? Uh, I'm not sure. It was. It just affected one. Well, how'd you come up with 6,500? Just because you were mad? You thought you'd sue for the maximum allowable amount? Well, I was being told that my dog needed to go to specialists and surgeries and all this stuff. And well, I, I don't, I that. don't, I think that's probably accurate. Uh, the, the problem is we're stuck in small claims court, not general civil court. And you can't sue somebody for an expense you haven't yet incurred, at least not in small claims court. I didn't understand the, the laws and the rules of small claims court when I filed. And that's common. I'm not being, you know, people aren't experts. You can go look stuff. Now you could hire a lawyer and sue them for up to $25,000. But as a practical matter, I'm not um, sure how well you're going to do it trying to collect this money, but at least the guy is here. Now this is near the intersection of 66 and 60. Correct. So you live on 66. How far down? Uh, directly across the bridge. We're on opposite sides of the river from each other. All right. So near where that road goes back in the back, mm -hmm. the little white house there on the corner next to that road. No, I'm on the south side of the, the river. My dog crossed that main bridge and went to his house on the north side of the river. We're both on the west side of 66. All right, the west side of 66. So the first house up the hill from the river, big big yard. Um, I'm the second house back. You can't see my house from the road. But you're on the west side of 66. Yeah. Second house on the south, south, of, of, the south of the bridge. Okay. Yep. And he lives on the other side of the river? Yes. Toward where the little uh, River Bend Gardens is? I'm not sure what that is. Well, I didn't know there was a house between there and River Bend. Uh, as you head east toward Union City? No, it, it, when you got to the T of 66 and 60, you'd head west towards Menden. And okay. he's on the south side of the road. Way on the north side of the river. So he's on 60 and I'm on 66. Okay. But the river, the, okay, the north side of the river. Okay. Um, is he on the river side of M60, of M60? Is he along the river? Yeah. Okay. Our backyards are directly across. You could stand in the backyard of both our houses and see each other across the river. Okay. I my guess. dog crossed the bridge to get to his property. Why? Because my dog's an idiot, apparently. He, Does he have animals or chickens or no. dogs of his own? But your dog was just out and about. My dog escaped out of his pen, and I believe he was trying to follow me to work. And he just ended up crossing the bridge. I had several phone calls from people when I put my number out about almost hitting my dog on the bridge. All right. So your dog is normally pinned up yes. or in a cage. Yes. And so on this particular day, the dog got out. Yeah. He, he escaped through a hole that I've fixed since then. All right. And the neighbors heard the gunshots. Where are the neighbors? Um, they live just west of him. There's one house between them and Don's property. So they're about 100 yards away from where it happened. Well, there are West. several houses there along the river. Some of them are I don't know what the word is. Um, surprising, I guess. They look like a little house from the street side. But from the riverside, they're very big. They go down an embankment. There's a little house there. It looks like about an 800-square-foot house. <laughs> but it's actually about a 
4,000 square foot house. Mm -hmm. You know which one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's red. Um, and so some of those houses are small. And so there's also the house that has the Indian on the horse. Uh, is that his house? Um, no. His would be closer to M66. This is at the closest house to 66 and 60 corner. All right. Well, I'd like to give you more, but all I can justify is $495. Um, the other expenses you suffered, but he doesn't have notice of them. The other expenses, I don't even understand what they are um, other than your loss. Um, so I find on your behalf, amount of $495 plus $83.50 plus $46.63 is $130 plus $495 dollars which is about one tenth of what you asked for. And your dog probably has future medical appointments. Mm -hmm. um, but this ends it. You, I guess you may be prohibited from suing him for future costs. I guess I'll leave that up to what to be determined. Um, how old is this dog? He's six. All right. He's 14 pounds. He's a miniature poodle. I don't. Now, there is a law that allows a homeowner to shoot a dog if uh, it's quote unquote worrying their livestock. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he had chickens or a goat or anything but he isn't here to argue about it on um, the police report he's denied doing it so yes well if he were here and said gave his side of the story you may not have prevailed at all but you're here by default for all the allowable expenses i could allow So if you go out to the counter, the clerk will give you a copy of this order. I find $495 plus costs, which is $625.13. Now, he probably isn't going to pay that the way he's treated the rest of this. Um, after 21 days, you can ask for a discovery subpoena, which is an order that compels him to come to court and explain um, what assets he has and the ability to collect, including giving a social security number and bank account numbers. If he doesn't do that, he's subject to contempt and could be placed under arrest with a bond set at the amount of the debt. So he has 21 days to pay this. If he does, that's done. If he doesn't come back to the court and ask for a discovery subpoena. Do you have any questions? Um, for those future bills or for what was missed, can I file another small claims court so you can come in here and argue about it? You could try. He may come in and say uh, that claim has already been litigated. Um, but yes, you can try it. And we'll see whether he shows up. Thank you. All right, if you go out to the counter, I'll give you a copy of that. I'm gonna hold on to everything, including your pictures in case something more comes of this. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you. Our second small claims case is before Judge Phyllis Webster in Kansas. 
This is Cassie Lynn Bechtel versus Briley Goad, and Ms. Goad had rented a salon booth from Ms. Bechtel, and then didn't pay all of her rent. And since then, it's been excuses and justifications, and yes, she owes it, but she can't comfortably pay it right now. And that isn't really a reason. So, hope you enjoy. Good morning. We are on the record in the 13th Judicial District, the District Court of Greenwood County, Kansas. This is case number 2023 SC3 00001 Bechtel versus Goad. Would the uh, plaintiff please announce your appearance? That is, tell us your name. Oh, Cassie Bechtel. And who do you have with you, Miss Bechtel? Oh, maybe I'm not the plaintiff. <laughs> Am I the plaintiff? Yes, nobody's with me. <laughs> All right, so the plaintiff is Cassie in the bottom, Cassie Bechtel. The bottom on my screen. I'm not sure how you yeah. feel. Okay. All right. So then the defendant would be, you'd state your name. Are you brought, is Briley Goad here, the defendant? I'm not hearing you. Do you have volume you can turn on maybe? Can you hear us now? Yeah. 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 Okay. You now need we to have an echo. The yeah. They need. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we have you on your side. Oh, you turn your screen so you're not. There you go. All right. Okay, so we will try this again on the record in 23SC300001. Is it Cassie or Casey? Yes. Cassie, Cassie. Be and it's Bechtel? Yes. Cassie Bechtel Plaintiff versus Briley Goad. Goad. What is it? Goad. Goad. And which one of you is Briley Goad? Me. Okay, Briley Goad in person. And Miss Goad, who do you have with you? Amy Cordell, and my mom. That's your mother. Is she a witness in the case? Potential witness? Yes. Okay. This matter does come on for trial based on a petition in small claims court. <coughs> Excuse me. In which the plaintiff alleges what appears to be a breach of contract for booth rental at a salon in Eureka. So Miss Bechtel, could you just give me uh, a brief overview of your basis for this claim? Just a brief overview. I don't want you to start your testimony yet. Sure, um, we just signed a contract um, like the 1st of June through September 30th. Briley was just out of nail school, and so she was going to start working. We had a contract just through September, first of all, just to make sure she wanted to still be in Eureka and do nails there. And then after that, it was supposed to be a month-to-month -month basis. Um, she ended up asking about leaving early, and I told her, I mean, you could leave if you needed to, but you, she still owed me at that time $900, so... She ended up paying August rent, the lot, the 400. And so she still owes 500 and came and got her stuff in the middle of the night and left her key, but uh, no chance. Uh -huh. All right. So you're seeking judgment for what amount? For the 500 that she still owes me. Very well. Now, Miss Briley Goad, uh, do you agree that you, well, what, what is your brief, brief response? Not your testimony yet, but your brief response that you owe this lady $500. Um, 
I do owe her 500. Um, we did sign a contract. I did ask to leave early um, because of some, at that time, home situation um, had changed a little bit and I had to move back to my original home. Um, and at that point and currently still, um, I could not drive an hour back and forth to um, Eureka to work for just a few clients. What, what I think I just heard concerning the issue in this case is a consent to the judgment that you do over the 500. Did I hear that correctly or understand that correctly? Yes. Why have you not paid her the 500 if you believe you owe her? I haven't been able to. I've um, told her multiple times over text that um, I do not have the 500 to pay her. Um, I've tried to set up to set up different payments for her. Um, I sent her a check at one point to start a payment. Um, and she had sent me a picture of it ripped up, not accepting the payment. All right. Well, since there is no dispute as to the amount owed and the obligation to pay it, I do grant judgment to Cassie Bechtel in the amount of $500 uh, plus post-judgment interest at the legal rate. You can check with the clerk, but last I knew that was still 12%. Now, Miss Goad, with this judgment against you, the longer you put off paying it, the more expensive it's going to get because of the interest. And because she has judgment, she can garnish bank accounts, wages, uh, whatever other legal means are available to her to collect this judgment. If Ms. Bechtel is willing to work with you on a payment plan, that I, I would encourage, it would be easier probably on her than filing multiple garnishments and, and so forth. However, if she would develop a payment plan with you, you'd better stick to it because Again, she will have the judgment and she can enforce that. So that's where we stand on this. Uh, you need to, if you don't have it paid uh, in 30 days, she can send out a debtor's form that will require you to fill out uh, a number of answers to questions about your property and accounts and so forth so that she can attempt to collect the judgment. And if you don't respond to that, she can file a contempt action and cause you to come before me. And then I'll uh, have to put you under oath and order you to fill out the form. And I can find you in contempt. Contempt can be punishable by fines and even jail time, believe it or not. So I just, I know times are tough and it sounds like you're one of the many people who are in that financial situation where it's a struggle, but the money is owed and you acknowledge that. And so uh, I just urge you to work it out as much as you can. In fact, Ms. Bechtel, if you're interested in hearing a proposed payment plan, I can put you in a breakout room. Um, um, I'm not. And solely because she one time contacted me about a payment plan and it was in this letter that she had sent me with a $20 check. She, I have no, I have our text. I've sent even to the court and screenshots and there was never any tried to work out a payment plan, which I wouldn't agree to because I have proof that she's been like getting her hair done, going to concerts, doing things like this. And so to me, if you can do that, you can pay your bills. As far as I know, this could be an assumption. She lives at her mom's. 
So probably very slim bills, if any. Does nails in El Dorado and works at a Wichita. So to me, I think that that's kind of ridiculous that I would have to take $20 payments that she offered one time in a text or in a letter with a check that said in the letter, if you don't agree to this payment plan, rip it up. That's why I ripped it up and sent it to her because I don't agree to it. So to me, if you can do all these things, I feel like there's no way you can't pay me. You have plenty of opportunity to make money in Eureka and in El Dorado because she was driving to El Dorado two days from Eureka. So this is not a me problem. I feel like this has nothing to do with me. This is a somebody just doesn't pay their bills problem. And I'm not okay with it. And I'm not willing to make payments on $500. I just want the money that she owes to be done. Okay. Well, that that's, uh, you don't have to try to pick payments. I'm just putting that out. There's an option. It sounds yeah. like it's not acceptable. So again, Ms. Goad, I did encourage you to try to uh, pay this as soon as you can, because I've seen folks in this small claims court start out with very small judgments and then years later they're back with owing four and five times more because of interest so make sure you don't ignore this make sure you do get it paid and i've told you both some of the remedies that if, if you don't pay so that is my judgment is there anything else we need to take up before i adjourn this hearing no what about what are her other options as far as because she, it's not like she has $500. And yes, she does live at home, but she has bills continuously and is a provider. An 11-month-old child. She is a provider for her 11-month-old uh, daughter. <laughs> I Ms. Uh, Ms. Cordell, you said she's your child and she lives with you. What town do you live in? Benton. In Benton, Kansas. Okay. And we live outside of Benton, but... All right. Are you, her, you're not an attorney by chance, are you? No. Okay. Because attorneys aren't to be here. You're really not in a position to represent her, but I don't have a particular problem with you raising these post-judgment questions. Again, I've gone over what can or will happen. So how she gets the $500 that's up to her, whether she borrows it from family, friends, a bank. That's not that's not something I can tell her how to do. That's her choice. But she does have this judgment against her. And so, I mean, I understand and appreciate your concerns, but I can only tell you from a legal standpoint that she does owe it and she does need to get it paid for her own best interest that it doesn't keep snowballing in expenses for her. Right. And she plans on paying it. I think there could have been a little bit, a little bit of compassion from Kathy, but it is what it is. All right. Well, thank you all. And at this time, this hearing is adjourned. Thank you. When I first saw this case and heard the first few comments, I really thought it was going to go a particular way. Like, you've got to make sure you're suing the right party. And that's a question that comes up in this case. So I thought it was really interesting how it turned out. And I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Hope you enjoy. Uh, Eugene Fatato versus Robert Taylor. Would you both please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Furtado says he paid you $1,000 on a contractor job as a deposit and you never did the work and you won't return the deposit and he wants his money back. Is that correct, Mr. Furtado? Yes. What's your response to that, Mr. Taylor? Um, I stopped uh, corresponding with Mr. Furtado when he threatened to get a lawyer. Um, my company is a limited liability corporation. Um, I am not a sole proprietor or anything like that. So he, he filed this under Robert Taylor, which, um, by law is not supposed to 
be filed under my name. It's supposed to be filed under the business. Um, well, guess so what? Um, he sued you personally. Uh, not the business. Well, let's take a look. Um, the contract here, the Sky Nova, I can't read it very well. Um, who did you contract with, Mr. Furtado? I contracted uh, with Rob's business, but paid him personally. So, Mr. Taylor, you just get to keep his $1,000? Um, no, I just don't have to correspond with him when he threatens me with a lawyer at this at that point. I, 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 I'm not required to do that. All right. Well, you're required to give him his money back. One thousand dollars plus sixty three dollars fifty in service fee and a filing fee and a twenty six dollar service fee. You own one thousand eighty nine dollars. And fifty cents. Do you have the ability to pay that? At this time, um, I am trying to revamp the company. So um, I would need some time to pay them back. But yeah, I, I could pay them back the $1,000. Um, All right. Well, the debt is due within uh, 21 days or he can pursue collections. Um, and... Uh, He's still at the Van Resort Drive address. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to set up installments. Um, so he paid you $1,000 to do a job. You didn't do the job. No, it's actually... What, what happened was he fired me the day before I was supposed to have a climber come out there. So I really questioned whether or not I should return his refund because it cost me money. Um, well, I just, you didn't file a counterclaim and no, you owe him $1,000. So that's why um, I just let it come to this court date. Um, because he has literally posted all kinds of things out there on social media about me. And it's cost me tens of thousands of dollars with him doing all of that. When all he would you know, had there is that phenomenon. You need to be careful, Mr. Furtado. We had somebody in here this morning about posting things on social media. But this fact that this is even a small claims case watched by thousands of people isn't much good advertising for your business. So I'd suggest you return his money. Mr. Furtado, please don't post anything more. You have a judgment. He owes you $1,000 plus costs. Your Honor, and I would also yes. like to uh, request that Mr. Furtado remove all of that stuff off of uh, social media because the things that he put out there was that I was scamming him and all kinds of other things. Um, but he failed to mention the fact that um, he fired me, literally. Uh, and I told him it was going to take me a while to find him a climber. Uh, you know, we were in the middle of uh, the cutting season, in the middle of the summertime. And the situation that came up with the lift uh, was not out of, was completely out of my control. I was simply trying to get him his trees done as quickly as possible. So... The fact that he put all that stuff out on uh, social media has literally cost me, you know, I mean, I couldn't even tell you how many thousands of dollars it's cost me because each job that I get, usually it's around twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars per job. And I couldn't even tell you how many jobs it's cost me. But I know for a fact it's cost me at least three or four. And not to mention the fact that when he canceled on me, I had a climber coming down here that was a professional that was also going to do another job over in Marshall. And we were going to do his job first and then do the guy's job in Marshall so he could go back home. And when he did that to me, um, it uh, it cost me more money because I still had to pay the guy for showing up. Sorry. So, Sorry, that would have been fodder for a counterclaim, but you didn't make one. 
Right. All right. I'll send so, you each a copy of that judgment. So I guess you get to pay him a thousand dollars. The the check was paid to April of twenty twenty two. One thousand dollars. Apparently to Robert Taylor. 